the brains behind Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Mr. Reagan. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is not really the congresswoman of New York's 14th congressional district. She is essentially an actress. She's merely playing the part of a New York congresswoman. I know. What the fuck is this, dude? What the fuck is this? Oh my god. First of all, I mean, my dude, what is this? What is, wait, what is this camera? What is- Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is not really the- Bro, Republicans have too much money, dog. We need to take away all the money. We just, we need to, if you're, if you are a registered Republican, give all of your wealth right now, immediately. There's too much money. You have too much capital. You have too much capital on your hands. If this kind of high quality production can be created by this limp thick dipshit, they just have entirely too much money and too much time on their hands. Holy fuck, dude. Also, I, I just have to, I just had to put it out there. I'm sorry if you guys get fucking mad at me for this, but my boy's mole. Holy moly. What the Congress fuck? Of New York's 14th congressional district. She is essentially an actress. She's merely playing the- Look, look, this is my favorite part of the video so far. Part of a new- When, when, when this, when this light captures the mole, <laughs> it's like, brrrp, they hone in on it. My dude's got a fucking teardrop tattoo, dude. What the fuck? Dude, go check that, dude. There is... You definitely... It, it's cancer. Like, let's be real. That shit is fucking cancer, dude. It literally looked like a fucking dead pixel on my screen. Go take a look at it. New York Congresswoman. I know this sounds crazy, but bear with me. In 2017, a group called the Justice Democrats held auditions for potential congressional candidates that they would run on their platform for various congressional seats throughout the country. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's brother, Gabriel, submitted her for the role. Now, I've auditioned for many acting roles in my day. I've also cast- I can tell. You seem to- You seem, uh, to have the same- Uh, you seem to have the same style of every fucking failed actor who decides to become a right-wing show on YouTube. So- not shocking that you admitted that right off the bat. Asked many of my own projects. I probably didn't get fucking hired because you have a gigantic mole on your face. It's very distinguishable. <laughs> know how this works. If you find somebody with star power, even if they don't 100% fit the part, you go with it. Obviously, AOC. So wait, is he saying that he's literally never fucking had the, he, he's never had the star power? Wait, hold on, hold on. Let me run that back for the role. Now, I've auditioned for many acting roles in my day. I've also cast many of my own projects. I know how this works. If you find somebody with star power, even if they don't 100% fit the part, you go with it. Obviously, AOC has star. Literally admitting that... <laughs> literally admitting that he does not have the star power. What the fuck? <laughs> fuck. I love this already. This is a great video. Power. Just look at her. She's a superstar, the most famous person in Congress, maybe ever. Their casting was perfect. Now, I didn't have to go digging for evidence for this because they freely admit it. They brag about it. Back in 2016, we put out a call for nominations. We got over 10,000 nominations. Out of those 10,000 nominations, we found Alexandria. My brother told me that he had sent my nomination in the summer, but I was like literally working out of a restaurant then. I was like, there's no way. A casting call. They had a casting call. They. Ca yeah, dickhead. That, have you looked into the Justice Democrats at all? That is precisely the point. We looked all around the country for individuals who were willing and able to put forward a progressive message without taking any corporate donations. That's literally the whole point of the Justice Democrats, you fucking idiot. This guy, okay, you know what? I'm gonna take it back. Hold on. I'm gonna... I'm going to reel it back, okay? I'm going to dial it back for a second. I'm not going to be so cynical, okay? I'm not going to be cynical. I'm just going to say this one very sad thing that I just noticed. Our democratic process is so broken. The entirety of this system is so rotten to its very core that this guy, when confronted for the first time ever, perhaps, with a group that literally looks for um, untainted, uncorrupted candidates, decides that this must be a conspiracy. Holy fucking shit.
That is so sad. I want to, originally I wanted to attack this person for just being a, a gigantic imbecile uh, that is platforming insane conspiracy theories in an effort to make money for himself and perhaps some fame because, uh, you know, because he has a failed acting career and obviously uh, wanted to wanted to fuel his narcissism by any means necessary. Yeah, I mean, that's why he's doing it. Fuck this guy. Okay, never mind. I take it back. What a gigantic piece of shit. All right, fuck you, dude. I mean, I don't give a shit. Cast Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in the role of Congresswoman. And they did this so they could promote their own agenda. In this video, I'm going to make three very serious accusations against Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. One, she did not actually run for Congress. Two, she is a puppet Congresswoman. And three, the people controlling her are very dangerous. The first point I have already made, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez did not run. She was run. What I mean by that is Alexandria did not take it upon herself to run for Congress. She was used by this group, the Justice Democrats, as a figurehead through which they could gain control of New York's 14th Congressional District House seat. These guys not only scripted and produced AOC's beautiful campaign video, but they organized the entire grassroots campaign effort. They handled all the fundraising, the social media, the get out the vote effort. They turned Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez into a brand, and they used that brand to take control of that House seat. The people of New York did not elect a Puerto Rican girl from Brooklyn to represent them. They elected an Indian guy from Texas and a white guy from Tennessee. Now, let's move on to my second accusation. Alexandria Ocasio- Wait, what? An Indian guy from Texas and a white guy from Tennessee? Cortez is a puppet congresswoman. AOC does not make her own policy decisions. Why? Okay. Why does this fucking weirdo who lives in his uh, studio apartment in New York making his sex slave shoot the fucking uh, uh, footage from the second camera who's obviously a terrified sex slave because she's literally, she or he is literally shaking. It Like, I mean, this person, it, whoever is behind this camera is like, please... Let me go, Mr. Reagan. I'm so sorry. Allegedly. This is parody. Please do not sue me. I know a lot of these fucking right-winger dipshits are really trigger-happy and really litigious when it comes to this sort of stuff. So, allegedly. I don't think you have an actual sex slave in your creepy studio apartment, Mr. Reagan. She does not decide which way she votes on legislation. She defers completely to her team. This is a serious claim, I know, but consider the following evidence. This is a video of Corbin Trent, one of Alexandria's top advisors, speaking with Zach Alexi, the solowinski style strategy expert who organized much of AOC's campaign. Corbin Trent is now Alexandria's top congressional aide. And what's the stat that we were looking at earlier about, uh... About how much people are making? Yeah, about, about low-income people and yeah. how big of a percent of our they society make that is. They make percent. Uh, well, people that make... Uh, no. $19,999 a year or less. So people that make $20,000 a year or less uh, make up right around 40% uh, of Americans, right? So it's- 40% of Americans make less, less than 20,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like 60 million people make less than, th than $20,000 a year. 200 million Americans make less than $20,000 a year. That's 40% of this country. 40% of Americans make less, less than 20,000. I cannot believe that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is using factually correct information in the form of talking points we fucking got them boys get him dude fucking get him mr reagan <laughs> fuck yeah dude fuck yeah dude i fucking this is my favorite guy dude left wing destroyed dude what the fuck god damn dude she fucking fucking why would she use a talking point that's factually correct Hell yeah! Woo! Fucking hate her. I just, I just, I just want to date her so bad. Why won't she look at me? Forty percent of this country. These guys are coaching her. They're scripting everything she says. You notice when she goes off script because she suddenly starts babbling incomprehensible. Does this guy not understand how, like, how how politicians, like, how politics works or how talking points work? Like, I just did he not realize that when uh, when he decided to to quit his failed acting career and and decide to to get into conspiracy theories <laughs> like even Alex Jones wouldn't make such a fucking dumbass point dude
Comprehensively, the girl in this next clip is now the head of the Justice Democrats. Her name, Alexandra Rojas. Really, I think a big anchor piece is the Green New Deal and talking about it in a frame of social, racial, and economic justice and uh, a mobilization of our economy and our society at the scale of what we did during World War II. The Green New Deal, how's that gonna be different? I think what we're calling for is a mobilization of our economy, of our society on the scale that we haven't seen since World War II. Like, this is the war, this is our World War II. It's clear that AOC is being co- Fucking got him once again! A person in her staff is giving her talking points. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Fuck, dude. Yo, how is he doing it so well, dude? What the fuck? We exposed. Exposed, dude. AOC has policy advisors. Ladies and gentlemen, send in the fucking SWAT team right now. Whoo! Wow. You want to know what the worst part about this entire thing is? Is like, I'm going to fucking stop joking for a brief moment. You want to know what the w worst part about this is? In a world filled by morons, this video gets 238,000 views and 21,000 likes. Because everyone else is just as stupid. Because everyone else thinks that this person is actually making a smart point. Let's see some of the comments really quickly. Because I want to just inject the brain cancer directly into my brain. The same as Barack Obama was a chosen puppet. What people don't realize is this happens all the time in banana republics. And now it's full on here. Here. In America. In in he America, there have always been puppets in American politics, but this is on a whole nother level, a steroid level, says Lee per imagination UTV. Been seeing your video fly around Twitter the past two days. Well done, sir. Too much on the camera angles. Don't jump around so often. It's distracting and dizzying, but content is good. Scary. Oh, oh, this is getting me fucking riled up. <laughs> Coach on absolutely every policy point she makes. And if this is not enough to give you pause, consider that the Green New Deal was drafted in one weekend by her staff. One of the largest tax, refor tax reforms that we have seen thus far since the Ronald Reagan era was drafted over a weekend with lobbyist scribbles all over it, and we literally passed it, okay? So what the fuck is this guy talking about, dude? The party not in control of government is, of course, going to draft progressive legislation in an effort to change the conversation to, a, to, to, to even start the conversation about more progressive policies that surround impending doom revolving around climate change. Jesus fuck. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez had zero to do with it. As far as I could find, she wasn't even in the room. Now, this is AOC's landmark legislation proposal. It essentially- Her team drafted it. We don't even know if she was in the room. Holy fuck, dude. Her staff writes her legislation? That's a wrap, boys. That's a wrap. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, I'm gonna tell you right now, okay? We're fucking on to you, okay? You and your staff are drafting legislation? How fucking dare you, dude? As opposed to lobbyists that draft legislation that we never get to read that our Congress people put out and, and pass. How fucking dare you? You're over, dude. You're fucking over, friend. Your days, your days of trying to help America are over. <laughs> yeah, fish. Fish is fucking, look at how riled up fish is, dude. Hold on. Can you see from over here? Nope, you can't. Hold on. Right? Right, fish? We fucking canceled her, dude. We fucking canceled her, sis. Right? Get it, dude. Get those toys. Yeah, AOC is unironically canceled for not uh, giving a full-throated response uh, and, and complete support critical support necessary uh, for Ilhan Omar at the time when everyone was uh, attacking her for no reason whatsoever. And it was disgusting that uh, she did not actually help her.
essentially sums up her entire platform and lays out everything she wants to do in Congress. She didn't even participate in the drafting of the legislation. And again, these people aren't even trying- Literally zero facts uh, up to this point. The only thing that has been factually correct is just like normal shit about how uh, congresspersons rely on their staff. Uh, AOC in particular not only relies on her staff, but also is straight up getting them uh, more payment than any other congressperson. I think she's like fought to get them paid at uh, $52,000. Yeah, she has a team that she relies on. Obviously, they push for uh, they push for, uh, you know, really progressive policies and she trusts them and it's fine trying to cover this up they're proud of it again aoc is a figurehead a mouthpiece the congressional seat is being operated behind the scenes old interviews show that the justice democrats initially declared that they wanted candidates of substance alexandria ocasio cortez was a bartender now who is more useful to an evil organization trying to take over congress a principled politician who happens to align with their views or a pawn a malleable innocent who they can manipulate somebody completely ignorant of politics who must rely wholly on them to direct all her political positions statements and votes aoc has had enough embarrassing gaffes to know that if she goes off script it hurts it can humiliate her so she has become absolutely dependent on the instruction of her handlers alexandria ocasio cortez seems like to anyone unfamiliar with her arrangement like a bit of an wait is he unaware that donald trump is president like <laughs> What the fuck is he saying? Donald Trump literally has like late stage syphilis rotting the core of his brain every time. Like he did a two hour fucking, he did a two hour speech at CPAC where he couldn't tie two concepts to get, uh, together. He called Tim Cook, Tim Apple in the same week that he called the CEO of Lockheed Martin, whatever uh, Lockheed. Like, literally, in the same week. I just, I mean, he's demented. He can't even fucking, oh, Marilyn, yeah, Marilyn Lockheed. <laughs> the channel was named after Ronald Reagan, who was an actor. <laughs> just... The fuck, dude? Enigma. Most of the time she seems to bumble along with no apparent idea about what she's doing. But sometimes she says and does things that seem kind of brilliant. Let's play a lightning round game. I'm gonna be the bad guy, which I'm sure half the room would agree with anyway. And, um, and I want to get away with as much bad things as possible. Ideally to enrich myself and advance my interest, even if that means putting, uh, putting my interest ahead of the American people. The limits that are placed on me as a congresswoman Compared to the executive branch and compared to, say, the president of the United States, would you say that Congress has the same sort of standard of accountability? Um, in terms of laws that apply to the president? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's just almost no laws at all that apply to the president. So I'm being held, and every person in this body is being held to a higher ethical standard than the president of the United States. That's right, because there are some committee, uh, ethics committee rules that apply to you. And it's already super legal, as we've seen, for me to be a pretty bad guy. So it's even easier for the president of the United States to be one, I would assume. That's right. Thank you very much. This is initially what got me thinking. Who's pulling the strings here? Who's the man behind the curtain? I went to CPAC last week, as some of you know, in Washington, D.C., and I met a lot of people in politics. Oh, so he did see the two-hour syphilitic fucking rant by Donald Trump, our president. That was off the cuff and definitely made so much sense. Occasionally, uh, somebody would bring up AOC. I always took this opportunity to ask one question. Who's really running the show? Who's the brains behind Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez? One guy had an answer. He grabbed his phone. He pulled up. I went, I went to CPAC to learn about the Justice Democrats. I know a lot about politics, by the way. The fuck? <laughs> Why would you go to CPAC to learn more about Democrats? Up a Politico article and he shoved it into my hand. That's who, he said. The man behind the curtain is this guy. Sankat Chakrabarty. Sankat was AOC's campaign manager and is now her chief. A, a great dude, by the way. Chief of staff. Sankat came out of Harvard and worked as an organizer for the Bernie Sanders campaign. This guy doesn't really have the charisma to run for office himself. He's a little awkward. He might have Asperger's or something like that. He kind of reminds me of Daniel Radcliffe, actually. But don't let his disarming awkwardness fool you. He's been an extremely effective political operative. He's got... Wait, what the fuck is this guy? This guy for, like... I mean, this guy can't sue anyone. Okay, never mind. He can't be litigious at all. He's just, like, throwing out insane shit left to right. He's like, oh, well, you know, this guy's, you know, this guy's Asperger's. What are you, a fucking Twitch streamer, dude? You're just calling people autistic left and right? What the fuck? You can't do that. Why is there 230,000? Oh, my God. <laughs> Not allowed, sir. TOS.
on some terrifying political influences, and he's suspected of committing some severe campaign finance violations. But we'll get into all that later. Psycat Chakrabarty is a sinister character, and hearing more about him later will give you chills. But the man who hired him to head up the Justice Democrats will horrify you, if you can even believe it. The mastermind behind it all, Jank Uger of the... Oh my god. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Young Turks. Now this may all sound completely nuts like a big conspiracy theory, but the Justice Democrats was heavily promoted on the Young Turks. We have video evidence from the inception through into the campaigns. I think they have maxed out on incompetence. So that is why we must choose a new path. And that is what we embark upon today. What we need to do is take over the Democratic Party. And as Martin Luther King said when he did the Civil Rights Movement, he said he was doing it not just to help African Americans, but to save the soul of America. Here we're going to try to save the soul of the Democratic Party by boarding the Democratic Party ship and taking it over. How are we going to do that? We're going to run strong progressives. From now on, there will be a new wing of the Democratic Party, and it will be the just. We have evidence of Jenk Uger starting the Justice Democrats. Here is a video where he talks about starting the Justice Democrats. The truth might shock you. They hid this so well, directly in front of our eyes, as Jenk consistently talks about starting the Justice Democrats. Like all the time. As a matter of fact, it's, it's not hidden at all. Why would it be hidden? if he's talking about it on his extremely successful online video show on a live stream in front of 15,000 people in videos that get seen by millions of people, why would he be hiding it? You fucking moron. Incredible. Justice, Democrats. We will seek social justice, economic justice, racial justice, and plain old justice, justice. Now you might think, if, if Cenk wanted influence in government, why didn't he just run? If Saikot Chakrabarty wanted influence in government, I mean, despite his awkwardness, why didn't he run? Why put up AOC? The goals of this group are far grander and far more sinister than simply electing a single congresswoman to office. The goals are to take over the Democratic Party, eventually take control of Congress, and in turn, control the United States. And I know- Wait, yes, none of this is, but none of this is a secret. He literally just said that in the video. You literally just mentioned it in the video that he put out there. Why would this be a secret? Wait, he just took a TYT video and repeated the facts in the TYT video to make it sound sinister. This, I'm pretty sure this person has never, I, I'm pretty sure, I, I don't know how old this channel is, but I'm almost certain that this person has no idea about anything in regards to politics. Like, there is no way he understands how any of this works. Because the first 10 minutes of his 23-minute video leading up to the big reveal about Cenk Uger uh, talking about an organization he started was saying that AOC has staff members that do research for her. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look at this fucking moron's... Oh my God, this is this guy's, guys, look at his description. He thinks this is where you put the, oh my God. He thinks this is where you put the fucking, the tags. Oh, oh, this guy's beautiful, dude. What a beautiful guy. Holy fuck, what a beautiful guy, dude. Hello, I'm Mr. Reagan. My mission is to spread reason and rationality throughout the world. I don't believe in petty motivations, envy, hate, resentment, or greed. I believe in rational solutions to real problems. I believe we have an obligation to help the less fortunate where they already live. And I believe in judgment not based on the color of one's skin, but by the content of one's character. I created my first May May. Ha ha ha.
I made a May May. I made a May May. The way my my maybe my children will call me now. Is this what the young whippersnappers like nowadays? I made a May May. <laughs> Why won't my grandchildren call me? It's got to be a liberal conspiracy. My wife left me. <laughs> All I have are these May Mays. Oh, fuck. Let's take a look. Let's get back to this dumbass fucking video. Holy shit, dude. This is art. This is real art, dude. Well, all of this sounds completely insane, but they have expressed their intentions very clearly on camera. We're going to run hundreds of candidates, and we're going to primary all the de establishment Democrats. So we're not going to be like, uh, is it Chuck Schumer? Maybe yes, maybe no, right. right? No, it's a hard no. But wait a minute now. Are you really going to primary vulnerable Democrats? Yeah, that's the whole point. If in 2018 we don't achieve our grand vision of, of a wholesale challenge in two years, which is very, very hard, we know that, right? You get, are you kidding me? If you got six, let alone 12, let alone 24 people in Congress, you know what would happen in Washington? People would freak the hell out. They'd be like, oh my God, what in the world? These guys that had no money to begin with, no nothing to begin with, just put 24 people in Congress. Look, we want hundreds. We wanna, we wanna replace Congress. In an article in Politico, one journalist wrote, I can't believe these guys have put it out there on one of the most successful political news shows on the internet. They're hiding it by putting it out there and publicizing it over and over again. But I, Mr. Reagan, will no longer, I found it. I found the conspiracy. That's how fucking stupid Republicans are, dude. That's how fucking stupid they are. Holy shit, dude. The group's criteria for picking primary targets is unclear and at times contradictory. Yeah, that's because their goal is not ideological. Their goal is control and power. Washington doesn't care about beseeching. That's not how it works. They care about power. So primaries are an exercise in power. It's way past time that progressives exercise their power in this country. And that's exactly what these guys are doing. Waleed Shahid, communications director for the Justice Democrats, has said, you can tacitly support Medicare for All and the Green New Deal. This is the dude that was, <laughs> when I asked, when I asked if AOC would like to come on my stream, Waleed was the guy who was like, no. <laughs> I mean, they're all guy. They're all great. Deal, and we still might primary you because there's enough energy in the district to find somebody more charismatic and compelling who is actually going to be a movement builder. No. You know why they might primary you? Because they don't own you. And maybe they found somebody that they think can beat you and that they can control. Another AOC. Even Wait. What, what the fuck? Wait, does he, does he like unironically get it? Does he kind of... Okay, Hulk, no, not right now, okay? Let me finish this, and then maybe I'll have someone else on to talk about it. Um, does, he, does he not understand that the whole point of Justice Democrats is literally to have candidates that are not owned by corporations? Did he miss, in all of the content that he secretly pulled, in all the content that he secretly pulled from the super secret streams that TYT had done to millions of people, um, did he not realize the part where we also say, hey, we're doing this because we want progressive candidates that are not owned by corporations, but I guess not. To find somebody more charismatic and compelling who is actually going to be a movement builder. No. You know why they might primary you? Because they don't own you. And maybe they found somebody that they think can beat you and that they can control. Another AOC. Even Ilhan Omar has said it's quite inappropriate for groups to decide on whether or not somebody deserves to represent their district. Those decisions need to come from the people that we represent. And Ilhan Omar was actually endorsed by the Justice Democrats after she won her primary. The reason more people aren't speaking out against this completely unethical political tactic is that nobody knows it's happening. I mean, you might be asking, if all these guys are so corrupt, if what they're doing is so obviously sinister, why hasn't anybody else? Okay, you want to know what the fucking sad part about this is, dude? Aside from... Aside from my aside from my stream and the Young Turks and Kyle Kalinsky stream, and maybe like one or two articles here and there, one or two articles here and there, the sad reality is no one talks about Justice Democrats. Okay, no one. 
And that's precisely why dipshits like this think that they launched a conspiracy, think that they landed a big conspiracy. And unironically, what this guy is doing is giving us and Justice Democrats more marketing than anyone else has done thus far in mainstream media, which is the saddest fucking part. The reason why corporate media is fucking bought and paid for and run by corrupt idiots who don't understand anything, who don't understand anything about the progressive movement uh, about uh, about can uh, fuck I can't even talk about candidates that are unlike any other candidates they've seen thus far. The reason why they don't talk about Justice Democrats is because either a they're fearful and they want to avoid us, or b they just don't care. They think it's fucking bullshit. They don't realize that. And I've mentioned this on Train's uh, stream before, like two nights ago, and you guys remember that um, that that like. Five of the uh, of the six fucking most popular uh, Democrats right now are Justice Democrat uh, candidates. We found them, we gave them support, and and part of the reason why we did that was because they were bold progressives who took a stance against corporate donations. reported on it. Their tactics have been extremely different to anything seen in the U.S. before. And that's probably why nobody has caught on to what they're doing yet. Also, mostly what they're doing is annoying. No, no one has caught on to what we're doing yet, even though we openly, boldly, uh, we wish that more people would write articles like this. Maybe, perhaps not in a negative light, but we wish that people would, like, actually do coverage on the Justice Democrats, and yet they do not. But they don't, because they're, because they're fucking dumbasses. Democrats, so conservatives, haven't paid all that much attention. The first thing the Justice Democrats did was to try to primary Democratic incumbents. What that means is they would mount primary campaigns against incumbent Democrats, establishment Democrats already in Congress that they didn't like. This, as far as I can tell, was Jank Uger's idea. Basically, the concept was, since many establishment Democrats weren't progressive enough, i.e. socialist, the Justice Democrats would nominate their own candidates to mount a primary challenge. One of the guys they didn't like was Joe Crowley, the guy that they put AOC up against. He had been in Congress for 20 years. Other members of Congress have reached out to AOC to try to convince her to stop primarying establishment candidates, but they're reaching out to the wrong person. AOC does not control the show. They should be trying to convince Saikot Chakrabarty. He's the one AOC takes her orders from. But Jank and Saikot's plan is not to win a couple of- Wait, why is he not mentioning Kyle Kalinske? Everything he talked about in this like sinister secret fashion is completely above board and completely legal. And not only is it completely legal, but we have actively tried to get marketing around it. We have actively tried to get media write-ups around it. What the fuck? This is madness. Crean said, fuck you, Hassan, and your just-ass Democrats. You have been exposed, and you are a liar bitch face. I am now conservative. I don't need you. There are a whole lot of streamers that deserve my time and support. Fahizo donated $20, said, this leftist conspiracy reminds me of the old zeitgeist days. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for the donos, guys. Called just-ass Democrats. Fucking got them, dude. Fucking Ilhan Omar, quit your job, madam. AOC, just dethroned. Congressional seats. It's total congressional domination. Look, we want hundreds. We want to we want to replace Congress. Basically, Jenks' plan in creating the Justice Democrats was to replace all the Democrats in Congress with his own people. Radical leftists, socialists, people who would fall in line with his ideology. And he did it. He actually did it. Now, Jenks comes up with a... a he's like, he's like right there. He's like so close. If he didn't realize that like these people were progressive, this video could have probably been like entirely different. I've been shocked that the Justice Democrats have not gotten the kind of coverage that this uh, brain-wormed uh, conservative uh, conspiracy dipshit has afforded us. And it's just, it's, it's so weird because it's literally not a conspiracy. But I'm so glad that this person made this video. And he's like so close to getting it. 
clever quip from time to time, and he's been able to create a very successful propaganda platform with the Young Turks. But if you've ever watched him, you know he's not exactly a genius. He, he talks and acts more like a two-bit thug than a political pundit. So how did he do it? He hired geniuses. He brought in the top guys from the Bernie campaign. The Bernie campaign was unprecedented in their grassroots success. They were brilliant. I actually did a lot of research on this, and the keys to their success are equal parts nefarious and creepy, but they are nevertheless very effective. And you got to hand it to Jenk. Bringing these guys on was Wait, a- Wait, are you going to tell us what the key to their success was? That it was like creepy and, and nefarious? Please tell us what they did. Because if he- If he figures out, if he literally, if he's just going to say like in his research, he came to the conclusion that if he, if he came to the conclusion that like the policies that they put forward were incredibly successful and very popular, like, <laughs> cause that's literally it. The policies were listening to democratic voters and actually pushing for progressive change systemic change rather than marginal change that won't offend the sensibilities of capital owners and won't terrify the corporate kleptocracy that we've created literally someone just said free shit is popular lol w yes yeah at the simplest even even in terms that conservatives can understand yes free uh, free shit is popular it's not fucking free but it doesn't matter brilliant move fresh from the Bernie campaign with nothing to do they must have been itching to tackle a new left-wing oh we're just moving on from his research i guess i guess the research part of this video uh where he was going to describe uh I, where he was going to describe the 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 things that he researched and found about what uh led to the success of the Bernie campaign we're just gonna throw it out fuck it so Jenk had this crazy idea. Replace all the Democrats in Congress with his own hand-picked radical left socialists. And he had a brilliant idea. Get the geniuses from the Bernie campaign to do it for him. And they did it. They succeeded. Perhaps not as well as they wanted, but it did work. And that is terrifying. Of the guys that Jenk brought in from the Bernie campaign, the two most important, from what I could find, were Sycott Chakrabarty and Zach Exley. Sycott seems to be the philosophical core of the operation, and Zach Exley is the organizational mastermind. Zach Exley is basically an expert on Saul Alinsky-style community organizing. And both he and Sycott are tech guys. They're very experienced with social media campaigning. Now, they did a great job in 2018, but make no mistake, these guys are not content with their 2018 victory. They're playing a long game here. 2018 was just the beginning. They'll redouble their efforts in 2020, 2022, 2020. 2024, at which time I am 100% convinced that they will run somebody for president. For the 2018 elections, the Justice Democrats endorsed 79 candidates. 26 of them won their primary elections. Seven of them won in the general election and are now- Guys, he's fucking on to us, dude. He's fucking on to us, dude. Now in Congress. Most of these people's names I can't even pronounce. Raul Grijalva, Ro Con- The fuck? Oh my god! No way! He literally said it, dude! He just straight up was like, they're fucking brown, dude. They're fucking brown, dude. Look at the, oh my God. Elections, the Justice Democrats endorsed 79 candidates. 26 of them won their primary elections. Seven of them won in the general election and are now in Congress. Most of these people's names, I can't even pronounce. I, I can't believe that he would just put that in there. Yeah, I, I can't believe that he was just like, I mean, just say it, dude. Just fucking say it. I love, I love this guy. Holy shit. Raul Grijalva, Ro Khanna, Ion Presley, Pramila Jayapal, Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Of these- I can't even say their fucking names! <laughs> oh, oh, oh my fucking God, I love this guy. Seven, three were chosen through the audition process and are, as far as I can tell, puppets of the Justice Democrats, Saikot Chakrabarty, and Jank Uger. These candidates are- He didn't put Brent Welder in there, by the way, because Brent Welder is white. <laughs> but it's okay. He's a white guy, so fuck it. Ayon Presley, Rashida Tlaib, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Imagine if they run not 79 candidates, but 200 or 400 or 1,000. At their current rate of success, they would get 88 House seats. And if they improve their techniques, they might get more, including Senate seats. The first screenplay I ever wrote, I was 15, it was about a future in which a- Oh my god, the casual plug. Oh my god, the fucking casual plug. Dude, this guy hasn't given up, dude. You have a dream, buddy. Obviously, from the fact that the, the shirt doesn't fit you anymore, uh, obviously, you, you probably were in a little bit better shape, like maybe two or three years ago before the conspiracies really started rotting your uh, brain through the, your, your little mole there underneath your eyes. Just get back into it, dude. That's your fucking passion. Don't do it, dude. Don't fucking... Just, just, it's so obvious, dude. Just, just live your life, dude.
Live your fucking life. Go back to the gym. Hit the gym. Get the mole removed. You're going to do it. You're going to make it. I believe in you. A megalomaniac was trying to take over the U.S. government. He was trying to do this by installing puppet politicians throughout the U.S. Congress, giving him a majority, and in the climactic point in the movie, his puppet president is also elected. So in my screenplay, this uh, villain effectively gains control over the U.S. government through... Holy fuck, he's still talking about his screenplay. Oh my god. This is one of the most pathetic videos I've ever watched. I love this guy. To ...these politicians who are loyal to him. I never thought that this fiction that I wrote as a teenager would ever become reality. It's completely crazy, but... Guys, please buy my fucking screenplay. If there's any conservatives in the chat who have a lot of money, please buy my fucking screenplay, dude! It looks like this has actually started to happen. Jenk Uger is no longer formally associated with the Justice Democrats or AOC's congressional team, but whether or not he still holds influence over these people is unknown. Yes, of course he still holds influence over these people. Also, if you wanted to shit on Jenk and tarnish his reputation, this is the point where you could actually do that. This is the point where you could actually be like, he was fucking attacked by the right wing uh, who went and found like old blog posts to portray him as like some fucking uh, creepy dipshit. And then Justice Democrats immediately fucking dropped him like a bad habit. This is literally where you could have been like, Jenk sucks. Here is the proof. If you could do any research, if you did literally any research whatsoever, this would be your moment. This would be the shining moment where you could actually put something in there that would make Jenk look bad. And yet, it's so clear to me that all you did was look into Justice Democrats. Like, it, it just, it literally feels like it literally feels like he's trying to help us, dude. It literally feels like he's trying to help us. Like, I can't believe this. Like, this entire video is... This entire video thus far has been helpful to the Justice Democrats. Like, he didn't even... He didn't even actually mention any parts where he could, like, hit the Justice Democrats. Oh. What is known is that these people are dangerous. Zach Exley is a radical left open borders guy who was once no, a fellow... he moved past it. He, he didn't even talk about it. Okay, hell, I love this guy. ...at the Open Borders Foundation, which is George Soros' organization. And he seems to be the least extreme of these guys. Cenk Uygur calls his organization the Young Turks. The Young Turks is named after a group of Turkish revolutionaries formed in 1911 who slaughtered 1.5 million people in the Armenian Genocide. So we know where Cenk's influence is at. Saikat Chakrabarti is influenced by this guy, Subhas Chandra Bose. How do we know this? Because he wears this Che Guevara-style shirt with Subhas Chandra Bose's face on it in most of his videos. Videos. That seems like a pretty deliberate choice. At first, I actually thought it was his own face. I was like, why is this guy wearing a shirt with his own face? I mean, they're both brown, am I right, boys? <laughs> I got him. They're both freaking brown. Don't it? That's crazy narcissistic. <laughs> but then I figured out it was this Subhas guy. So who is Subhas Chandra Bose? He was the violent compliment to the non-violent Mahatma Gandhi. Yes, the legendary Gandhi. Whilst Gandhi was trying to expel the British from India non-violently, this guy was like, no, let's start a war and let's kill them all. Like extremely good. Like the, the better version. <laughs> like, holy fuck. Actually, it was worse than that. Much, much, much worse. Subhas called himself a socialist, but he is quoted as saying, our philosophy should be a synthesis between Nazism and communism. Another important thing that we need- Zero percent chance I believe that. ...need to recognize about Subhas. Oh, actually, I do believe that, because uh, Hindu nationalism was part of the reason why there was an uprising to begin with in, in, in regards to undoing imperialism, but um, who knows. Wait, what? Wait, what the fuck? Wait, 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 hold on. Let me run this back. Hold Actually, on. Actually, it was worse than that. Much, much, much worse. Subhas called himself a socialist, but he is quoted as saying, our philosophy... Okay, Subhas Chandra Bose. I don't really know anything about this guy, but hold on. Let me just do some... Wait, 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 hold up. Thank you, Druidville. Thank you, Druidville, for the five tier one gift subs. Bose's earlier correspondence prior to 1939 also reflects his deep disapproval of racist practices and annulment of democratic institutions in Nazi Germany. Oh, wait, never mind. Okay. Quick Wikipedia. 
Bose was accused of collaborating with the Axis after he fled the Germany in 1941 and offered Hitler an alliance. He criticized British during World War II and saying that the Britain was bargaining, uh, was fighting for the freedom of the European uh, nations under Nazi control. It would not grant independence to its own colonies, including India. Not wrong. It may be observed that, uh, along with Nehru, Bose or had organized and led protest marches against the Japanese invasion. Da -da 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 -da. Bose's earlier correspondence also reflects his deep disapproval of the racist practices and annulment of democratic institutions in Nazi Germany. He also ever expressed adm admiration for authoritarian methods, though not racial uh, ideologies, which he saw in Italy and Germany through the 1930s, and though they could be used in building an independent India. Nevertheless, Bose's tenure as a Congress Party president did not reflect any particular anti-democratic or authoritarian attributes. Never mind. I can't believe, when did Wikipedia become a scholarly source? Um, I don't know. When you can literally click on the, the actual uh, articles that link back to scholarly sources or at least like news articles from the time that's when it usually becomes a scholarly source, but who knows, dude. Anyway. Guys, I don't know if you knew this, but a lot of the stuff on Wikipedia, you actually have to you actually have to link back to scholarly sources. So anyway. It must be that Wikipedia is bad and for socialism even though it literally is. Wikipedia is uh, one of the best open source platforms out there and its existence proves that uh, open source platforms do work. Anyway, where were we? Okay. Philosophy should be a synthesis between Nazism and communism. Another important thing. Seems like a gross misrepresentation of his perspective, but let's move on. Also, yes, you should be violent against imperialist forces in this regard. Just gonna put that out there. Also, everybody, uh, donate, to w donate to Socialist Wikipedia, okay? If you want socialism to exist, you need to donate to Socialist uh, Wikipedia. that we need to recognize about Subhas is that he was an anti-colonialist. Now, we're not super familiar with his political perspective here in the U.S., but in India, anti-colonialism causes deep resentment to this day. This is explained in the documentary film 2016, Obama's America. In this film, Dinesh D'Souza explains anti-colonialism and shows how these ideas influence Barack Obama because, and this is the scary part... Wait, is he unironically defending colonialism right now? By using Dinesh D'Souza? Wait, what the fuck? This video just went... This complete, I love this guy up until this point, and it literally just like, it, 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 it went off its rails so quickly. Why did he do this? The United States is founded on colonialism. To the anti-colonialist, the U.S. is an evil empire that colonized North America. The United States- Okay, he just keeps mentioning factually correct statements is the enemy and is to be fought, is to be resisted, torn down. This is the guy that Saikot Chakrabarti, AOC's chief of staff, wears on his t-shirt, a pro-violence, anti-colonial socialist who dreamed of a Nazi communist government. Wait, the last part is, is incorrect, the Nazi part at least, but what the fuck? What is he talking about, dude? He just said Nazi communist. Does he not? Okay. I understand that he doesn't really understand, uh, like, contemporary politics. Dude, Boza did suck, seriously. Okay, I'll take your word for it. I don't give a shit about Boza or whatever. Um, but just, just like a cursory glance at history that they teach, I think around fourth grade or fifth grade, maybe. I don't really know. Uh, I don't really know when they teach uh, the, 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 the fact that Nazis and communists fought one another <laughs> like, I don't know what grade they teach that in, 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 you know, in American public education, but literally, like, you should know that at least. You know what I mean? 
This is the man behind the curtain. This is the brains behind AOC. It's definitely scarier to me that he's not a congressman, but that he is the man behind the curtain. There is no accountability for the man behind the curtain. If AOC falls from grace, he can just hire another actress. There are no term limits to being the guy behind the curtain. When I got back from CPAC six days ago, Saikot Chakrabarty was in the news for the first time ever. I was surprised because I'd never heard of him until I went to Washington. As it turns out, he has been flagged recently. CPAC wasn't even in Washington, but let's keep going. Uh, he just like... I think he's lying about that as well. Just for the record, like I, he might be lying about going to CPAC as well. <laughs> or maybe in his mind, it's like, oh yeah, you know, I, I, I paid two thousand dollars to go to CPAC, which is basically Washington. <laughs> for diverting at least $1 million in campaign donations from the political action committee that he was running to shell companies that he set up. At the moment, it's unclear whether he was embezzling the money or just hiding it from FEC oversight. Either way- Neither is true. This is all above board again. This is all, this all turned out to be fucking complete bullshit. This all turned out to be complete bullshit and was again, and this might shock you, openly admitted on the Justice Democrats webpage. We are we're doing a, a, a very, very bad job at hiding all of these things by putting them on the internet routinely and consistently. It looks like he's in trouble. For a guy who claims to be trying to get money and influence out of government, he doesn't seem to mind leveraging those tools himself. You, you may have heard something about this. What you probably haven't heard about is AOC's sinister living wage rules. So AOC announced a little while ago that she was going to cap her congressional staff's pay at 80000 so that she could pay her bottom level staff a living wage and her interns $15 per hour. But here's the thing. AOC's living wage rule allows her staff to dodge financial disclosure laws. Under federal law, congressional employees who earn over $126,000 per year must disclose all of the outside money that they earn. Because AOC's top staff will not be making over $126,000 per year, they will not be subject to this law. I wonder who came up with this brilliant scheme, Saikat Shakrabarty. I know it wasn't the bartender. This team of guys who got AOC elected and who are now pulling the strings of her congressional seat declared at the outset that they were trying to bring integrity into government, transparency, to flush out the corruption. Well, it looks like they're trying in every way they possibly can to hide their own activities. They say that- Wait, is he- where is the proof of this? Wait, what the fuck? There's no... What the fuck? He just... He can't... No, dude. I mean, holy fucking shit, dude. Yeah, who's funding the Justice Democrats? Please ask this question and realize that it's literally independent donations. Like, where is the proof of anything that he just mentioned? sunlight is the best disinfectant, I say it's about time we pulled the curtain all the way back on this particular wizard and all of his friends. Oh, and just remember, the next time you see Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she's fake. She's a fraud. She's not real. None of her- <laughs> Yes! Fucking got him, dude! You fucking told her, dude! You fucking got him. Tweets are actually her tweets. None of her speeches are her speeches. Her answers to questions and in interviews, she was coached to give those. She's not a real congresswoman. She's an actress. The fuck do you mean? Literally what you everything that you mentioned makes her more of a congresswoman than perhaps what we previously thought. All right, that's it for me. If you like this episode, hit the like button. If you want to see more like this, please subscribe. And if you Dude, that's a like for me. That's going to fuck act. Never mind actually. That's going to ruin my fucking related search bar. Going to unlike that very quickly. Hit that with a dislike. Holy fuck, dude. That was incredible. Mr. Reagan, I thank you for perhaps doing uh, more work on behalf of Justice Democrats than anyone else in mainstream media combined. Thank you so much. I hope you do more. Hate me. You're probably Saikot Chakrabarty or Jank Uger because hopefully I just tore down your evil plot for world domination. <laughs>